does it take to store a certain amount of charge on a capacitor? Okay, so the work required to store a certain amount of charge, let's say you start out with uh, two parallel plates, okay, and you want to store charge on here, so you're putting a uh, battery, and a certain amount of charge is coming here, so let's call it DQ. Some certain amount of charge is coming there. The work required to bring that DQ is going to equal to what's happening. If I want to know the total, the total amount of work, I, I uh, place a DQ amount of charge on it, okay? And then based on that, you have a potential, the potential difference develops, right? Then I place another DQ, another DQ, another DQ, another DQ, okay? So let's say down the line, as I'm placing these DQs, I want to know how much is the next increment of work I have to do. So I want to show you the idea where it's coming from. So let's say you're down the line in the process. So now you have already placed Q amount of charge on the capacitor. You have already placed the Q amount of charge and this is negative Q. And now you want to know how much extra it's going to take to put one more DQ. You see? You want to know how much extra work it's going to take to put the next DQ. So it's going to be D DW is DQ delta V. So uh, this, the DQ is how much what you, I'm putting in one increment more of Q. The D the DB is the potential difference between them when they already have a charge of Q, negative Q on it, you see? That's where it's coming from. So then the potential difference between them at any time is how much charge total you have divided by the C, okay? So then if you go here, I get DW, DQ, delta V, and the DQ stays DQ, the delta V is Q or C, is the total charge that is on the plates up to that point, you see? So now that gives you your DW. And now, if I want to find the total amount of work that it takes to, to bring in a certain amount of charge, I integrate this from zero to my final charge Q. Or I can call this, uh, my final charge I can call capital Q. You know? And this is how you get, this is the total amount of work that it requires to charge a capacitor. So it's going to be uh, Q squared or 2C. That's the formula that we get. See, the, the, what's going to happen here, the more you charge it, the more, the harder it's going to be to charge it more because the potential difference is going to be higher, uh, the, the, in, the tendency of these electrons is going to be what? The tendency of the electrons is to go back and ionize the proton here, right? They don't want to stay here. The, they want to go back and ionize the proton. So if there's a certain amount of charge Q on it, and you want to put an extra amount of charge DQ, it's going to be harder. The more charge you have on it, the harder it's going to be to put the extra amount of dq. So that's why the formula is the dw is delta q dv, and the dv is q or c. So the higher the q, the harder it is to charge it. Okay? And then when you integrate it, you get q over 2c. That's the, the logic of how the derivation comes about. Okay, now, the other forms of that formula, I can, I can do like this. I can say q... When you have charged it up to a certain Q, Q is equal to C V. Right? Q is equal to C times V, or I could write it as delta V, but uh, that's fine. Sometimes we write it as V or sometimes we write it delta V, it doesn't matter. So then I could input that over here and then square it. And I get uh, C V squared over 2. So that's the form of the formula. Or I could uh, say 
C is equal to Q over V. And I could come up with the other form of the formula. Q and a Q cancel, and you have a half Q V. So here's the sum of that then. The total energy stored in a capacitor is a Q squared over 2C, or it's equal to half CV squared, or it's equal to half QV. Now, one that we derived is this one, Q squared 2C, but could you use this one or this one? Now, which one should you use in a certain problem? It depends. In some problems, you're given the charge of the capacitor and its uh, capacitance, so you simply use that. If you know its capacitance and voltage difference between the plates, you can use that. And if you know the charge and the potential of the capacitor, you could use that. Or, and sometimes you could use a few of them, it doesn't really matter. So you could use any three of them, they should give you the same answer. That's the, the summary. Okay? So now let's talk about dielectrics, and then we're going to put all of them together, all of these concepts together, and do some actual uh, problems with numbers.